Welcome back to your Freedom to Learn podcast. My name is Guru Eleshwara Pu, founder and CEO of Silicon Valley for you. Um, yeah. So for those who are not familiar with this podcast, please um, press on the subscribe button and and like like the um, video so you get a lot of uh, new episodes uh, come to your way and also you can dig into the whole archives. Today, we have... Um, Madhu um, Anna Pragada. So I think I can pronounce pretty well. And um, Madhu Anna Pragada, he's uh, by profession electric, electrical engineer. That's what he likes to be, um, you know, um, associated with. And but by profession, he's the entrepreneur and um, he also had association with UPenn. So today he's going to talk about his journey and um, um, everything that led to kind of, you know, wherever he is today. And um, so, yeah, welcome, Madhu. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah so I think I, uh, you know, I just explained, uh, you know, a few things about, you know, this podcast and, you know, how potentially um, we can construct the content for the youth and, and their parents. Yep. So... So why don't you start, let, let's start with, you know, your uh, beginnings and, uh, you know, uh, how you started your, uh, you know, education in India mm -hmm. and how you got to U.S. and uh, and your journey uh, until now. Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, probably the genesis is uh, in the ham radio club in middle school, what would be, I guess, eighth grade here. Middle yeah. school here, eighth grade in India. And so I was always into electronics. I was building, you know, vacuum tube radios and stuff. And then that led to building discrete circuits on my own. So by the time I got to college, I was pretty much sure I knew what I was doing, right? what I wanted to do. It's electronics. Yeah. And that's been what I've been doing for the last uh, 35 years. Yeah, just electronics. Uh, I got here on a scholarship. They gave wow. me, I had a very good GRE score, and so they gave me a scholarship for a master's and then a PhD. So I'm, yeah, I got here because of a scholarship. <laughs> yeah. So, but did you want to come to US, or it just so happened that you know you got an opportunity, and hey, why not? Just let's go and see how it goes. 1990, India. You got to think back like, quite a bit. That's when I left, right? right. Um, you had two options. Um, you could join a company. There wasn't much engineering going on. They were just doing local manufacturing. So the economy was, any hardware was purely local in nature uh, and non-technical. Or you could join the government. Uh, again, it was, there was not much opportunity to do any development, R&D, right, electronics. Uh, so that was it. So, and my other option was to join the Air Force. I got into the Air Force, Indian Air Force. As oh, a, really? Okay. Yeah. No, the other choice. <laughs> so between that and this, and I got a full scholarship, a full ride. So I figured this is better. better. There was more opportunity here. There was a lot of go lot going on. Silicon Valley was never supposed to be software, right? It was silicon hardware. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, so, that's a good one. Uh, yeah. Edward Packard and the original hardware guys. So right. that was, that's what it did me. So yeah. Yeah, fantastic. So I know exactly what you're saying because I've been there uh, back then. I know you're into hardware. I was always, I was, I did computer science. So uh, there were only five companies back then, um, total in India. Mm -hmm. And um, I think Infosys, Wipro, CMC, right. and a uh, couple of other companies. I was in one of them. I joined CMC. So, and then I got here. Point is, yes, I agree with you that there was no tech economy, whether it's no. software or hardware. There's nothing, and um, yeah. So that back then, coming to US is part of the career. It's like a career goal. Like people prepare for US in third year onwards, and and then uh, it's it's more like you know doing a degree. It's like okay, I'm gonna go to I write Gate or I go to GIE. So it's like you know one of those options. So that's why I was asking. Yeah. Um, it's interesting times. I, I generally joke around with people saying that I came here pre-internet. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so now I know. So you've been here for a very long time. I was thirty some years now. Um, yeah. Right. And now you've seen everything. 
right in front of you. Uh, by the way, I work for uh, Silicon companies in Silicon Valley. So <laughs> I work for Broadcom. Um, oh, I see. Yeah. Still using. Uh, okay, yeah. So, yeah, uh, you have seen everything evolved, right? The best time of the century is in nineties, early nineties, and then you know it's all that, and then here we are, right? So, what's your take on? You know, I always say that there's a gap between you know the the real world and there's a you know the entire education system out there. What's your take on that? And do you think? Is there any way that can be mitigated? Um, I think mine might be a little bit different than your usual suspects, right? I don't know how it is in software, but in electronics, you cannot do anything without going to college. And the four years of college is teaching most double graduates these days, maybe 20% of what they need to know. Yeah. Really college. From our perspective, because we do hire graduates, you know, Electronics is not something you can pick up from a book. You need the labs, you need the projects, you need the professors who've done the work. So from my field, it is absolutely critical. Not just four years. I mean, we've been, IEEE has been pushing for longer <laughs> college terms. Right. It's not practical given the cost. Right. From my perspective, yeah. No, I mean, so, okay, I'm not expert in, okay, so definitely software, you're absolutely right. You don't need, I mean, in the sense, I'm not discouraging people not to have degrees. Point is that, you know, it's it's a degree alone, it's not going to cut it. You need to no. have the real experience and yeah. or you have to be, you have to have the um, ability to connect to the use case. Otherwise, it's just a tool, you know, whatever. Yeah. 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 So I worked uh, in Broadcom, I said, I was there for six years. Um, a bunch of VLSI guys uh, that, um, you know, they were doing backend and front end. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not, you know, the whole layout guys. Some of the, you know, except the manufacturing guys, which we don't deal with. We were pushing that to a TSMC in the Taiwan for manufacturing. Yeah. And, um, and so I used to visit a TSMC too. So, mm. uh, Except those guys, I believe there were a lot, tons of PhDs out there in you know TSMC. But um, I mean, here being Broadcom, we had obviously you know a lot of folks that were you know well um, you know educated. But at the same time, there are a bunch of guys who didn't have any type of uh, formal education. In other words, somebody who did like BCom or I don't know some BSc and things like that. And they just stumbled upon and then got to here and boom. And they were doing better than, with all due respect, um, some of the folks that came from, uh, I'll tell you one example, some top schools. So I'll tell you one incident where Broadcom had this policy that if you do a PhD, you get an office room. Otherwise, you get a cubicle. I see. Because that back then, they wanted to have more people with PhDs. They want to have more patents you know, on the company's list and because it just went to IPO and, you know, so they are, I guess, I, I guess, I'm not sure, but that's what I heard. I'll tell you right now, there were guys, you know, who were sitting in the queue because know exactly what needs to be done. They are very savvy in terms of the entire design and the whole, the logic and whole nine yards. These guys were having trouble understanding and so there was, there were times where they went to HR and said, no, I don't want to sit in the office room because people were, you know, the guys who are able to do it, they were sitting in the cubicles and they're not very happy that a guy who can't do it is sitting in the office room. That's <laughs> like, so, and then when you sit in the conference room, there is this mismatch. And then now oh, why are you asking me? You should tell me you sit in the office room. <laughs> so anyway, it's just uh, one of those silly uh, conversations, but at the same time, there, there is imbalance in terms of uh, expertise versus treatment or whatever you call it. And then they ended up asking HR, no, no, no I don't want to sit in the I want to sit in the cubicle so that I want to learn first. So point is that... What kind of, uh, uh, what kind of work were they doing, the ones in the cubicles? No, the same. I mean, they're all in the VLSA group and they were doing it all front end. So we're using VDSL and uh, using Cadence tools. Uh, I know you are what you are talking about. Cadence tools are damn expensive. I mean, I remember even now. I guess I'm pretty sure. That's why yeah. if you want to start a startup in that space, you're talking about twenty, thirty million dollars initial investment. Period. Otherwise, you can't get the first rev chip out 
um, with all the expenses. With Taiwan and Taiwan doesn't manufacture unless you show a lot of volume and things like that. So and you have to pay more. And then if you have one or two issues, you know, the getting the chip back, you're out of business. So uh, so it, it's 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 a you need yeah so um but these guys i was talking about were you know the mostly uh, front end guys uh, dealing with media stuff yeah and because i'm in the architecture guy i'm a networking guy back then my role was i'm a networking expert i'm a software guy so i define the flow for the chip how if a packet comes into the chipset how it ingresses how it ingresses uh, how it goes to the mmu and you know what happens in between and if packet is bad cs crs yada yada whole uh, i define the function functional side of things and they take that and then uh, i'm in that group not just me i'm in that group mm -hmm. define that and the other folks uh, take that and implement um and then and then ship it to the taiwan and get it back so that's mm -hmm. called XGS. I don't know if you guys use it. Um, so it's very, very popular in the industry today. Uh, XGS chipset from Broadcom. Anyway, Broadcom, mm -hmm. you know, switching side is pretty dominant even today, I think. Right. Yeah. 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 It's a 90 something. Yeah. So, but, but you are also right that in some areas, for instance, I mean, the areas that I don't know, especially in, in medicine and things like that. So there is there's some degree of college is near. But point, I think the question is, I'm not saying that college is not needed. What I'm saying is that even if you go to college, if you don't understand, for instance, take the same example of Broadcom, if if there is no understanding of how his skills can be used, his or her skills can be used oh. to de derive this chip that's going to solve this purpose, then you're going to, by the time you figure that out, you're going to lose five to seven years. Of course, yeah. So what I'm trying to say is that even if in the EE programs, you know, whatever they are being, uh, what is being taught, they're mm -hmm. not bringing in these use cases and say, by the way, you are learning this in order to solve mm -hmm. this problem. I agree 100%. That's my biggest beef with uh, current double curriculums is they start with uh, theory and go on, whereas I keep telling them start with uh, case problem. Okay. And then go backwards. And then go backwards. I keep telling, but it's not it's not a good thing here, here's the thing i mean most of the and these are really smart people right the professors yeah. i work with them but they've never been in charge of they've never been in industry where they're given a solution i mean a, a napkin sketch and say hey make this happen yep. take it to production yep they've never done that they've never seen the entire pipeline yep so they're not able to go from I need this all the way back to, okay, these are the fundamentals I need to employ to get there, right? They've never been able to. So I agree with you. That's what's missing in our education system. Yeah. So, so you are... But then, but you have to, you have to be careful, right? Because this is what MBA programs do. All they do is case studies, right? And you don't get much out of that either. I've, I've employed MBAs and I keep thinking, what did you pay for your degree? <laughs> <laughs> nah, and no. why? Yes, yes. I am 100. That's exactly, I think you put, you kind of put it in a different terms. So like, it's not the people that's the issue. It's the system is the issue. What I mean by that is you are absolutely right. The professors are high IQ. They have a lot of patents, great degrees, top schools, highly intellectuals, and they have the ability to think, et cetera. But they never been exposed to any use case whatsoever in their, in their life. And, it, and that a, doesn't I, resonate I, with them. The moment you bring it, that doesn't resonate. They think that's unnecessary or I, I don't know, whatever they think. That secondary point is that you that is the that is the challenge. And I you know, I spoke to a guy and who was in Santa Barbara. He moved to Chennai and he joined uh, IT Madras. He was saying that he's the only guy who worked in the industry and still not the norm uh, in the in the hiring process to get people who have some industry experience in IAD Madras today? Well, you also have to be a little bit careful. I mean, it's not a black and white issue, right? <clears throat> so, so I was in my PhD program for eight years, right? In those eight years, my first four years were the cutting edge fundamentals, right? Yeah. 
And the only people who could properly teach them were the professors who went through your standard pipeline, uh, yeah. master's, PhD, tenure yeah. track, right? They right. could teach the fundamentals very well. That's now, right. what was missing is applying the fundamentals to the real world. That's right. Now, you and I can go back and forth. Should we start with the real world and go to the fundamentals or should we start with the fundamentals and go to the real world? Either way. Yeah. I, yeah. It's not yeah. a simple, it's not as simple as us saying, uh, we got to start with the use case and go backwards because that hasn't okay. worked sometimes. That no, no, work. I agree with you. No, no, hold on. Yes, no, no, no doubt about it. I'm 100% with you. I'm not saying, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, you know, if you take just, you know, primary education, right? I'm not saying that you go to elementary school and say, okay, let's take a use case and, and right. then go with them. You know, it doesn't work that way. Until uh, lower middle school, you just go with the concepts, as you said, simple math, uh, addition, subtraction, whatnot. And you have to then, learn your multiplication, right? I mean, yeah, all that. you can't just Absolutely. say, hey, I'll start with a trade, stock Absolutely. market, all... you can't do that. <laughs> right. But all I... that, you know, you go to the fundamentals, just like the way it is today, or maybe even more refined one, whatever it may be. I'm talking about once you get to, the, you, you, to uh, relate to what you just said, the second half of your PhD, that's when they have to do in collaboration with industry people. I'm not saying that just take them out and replace them with the industry. That's not the point. Point is, there has to be collaboration between, you know, professors and the industry. And it's some kind of a co-curriculum. I mean, for the lack of a better term. And so that, you know, once as, as soon as these folks have strong fundamentals, they will be working with or be taught by or mentored by rather. I think that's uh, mentored by somebody who has done this. And and then then you take from what I mean by use case to uh, skills is at the end of the day, you know, from the get go. So let's say if I'm learning mobile app, why am I learning mobile app to define uh, developing a mobile app, right? What mobile app I want to develop, maybe for gaming, I'm just saying. If I have that in mind, I'm not saying that dwell into that right away. Have that goal, and then I start with basics, right? How you, what is UX, UI, and blah, blah, all that, and then I get there. Um, but if I don't have that goal, which was the case for me, I can speak for myself. When I did computer science, I didn't have any goal why I was learning all these programming languages. And, you know, I learned C, COBOL, yeah, yeah. And then, so why am I learning? Because I want to pass the exam. That's it. And uh, that's the extent of my you know, goal. And then what happens after that? God knows. And so that was then, right? As you said, then things were different. Now, fast forward today, it's, they're more or less same. I interview a lot of folks from all these universities. I asked one of the guys from Purdue, just don't, I don't want to know what you know, what you don't know, all that. Just summarize and articulate what you you have been taught last three to four years just summarize and you know database this that then then so that um so that I, my next question would have been you know hey you know now that you know all these things what do you think of what do you want to do and how do you want to take this to the real world i couldn't get to the second question mm. my first question is just listing all the courses from all his uh, semesters <laughs> i i don't i don't want to know your semesters now i'm just, to summarize, Eric, you are a computer science uh, undergrad right now. The industry is expecting that you are this. What is that this? Tell me who you are right now as, as it stands. If you don't know something, not a big deal. Nobody cares. Uh, he just couldn't summarize. It's not about him again. The point is that he never heard a word unstructured data. He never heard the phrase unstructured data after four years. Um, I mean, again, I don't think it's his fault. He's, he's, he's a bright guy. He went to Purdue. I'm pretty sure he's doing, he's going to do well. He'll figure it out. He will get there. <laughs> just that, you know, just that he was in this bubble where, you know, if I don't get this course or whatever, whatever he was doing, and I just want to finish my degree and we'll figure it out when time comes. And now time came and here we, here he is and trying to, I'm pretty sure he'll get some job and he'll figure his way out, but he's going to lose at least three to five years by the time he really understands what mm. he learned, what he wants to do, and where the industry is. If you if you put all those three dots 
by the time you figure it out and and also as you know the industry moves rapidly fast it's not like nothing is waiting for you it's not a your know, hist- history um, you know type right. project here uh, where it's just static you, you, so you you are trying to figure out something and industry is moving and and then companies saying that i don't want uh, that skill anymore i want you to do this and that's not taught and now you're back to square one <laughs> like now okay i got to take some crash course and then you join some boot camp in san francisco and so i always wonder man you had 20 some years of uh, computer science uh, formal degree now this boot camp is going to help you <laughs> so uh, anyway you know all that i, I guess uh, so that my question was the reason I was bringing up this question is now that you know you've been associated with UPenn, which is obviously one of the top schools in the world, one of the top, I don't know, ten maybe fifteen, whatever. And those, those, I mean, I tell you right up front at the risk of interrupting you, those rankings are completely meaningless. Meaningless, <laughs> okay. So but I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking from the average parent, right? You know, so yeah, so. Anyway, the point is that you've been associated with them and they're all bright people, no doubt about it. And um, so tell uh, people that, you know, want to go to UPenn or are just thinking of or dreaming about UPenn and, you know, so, you know, your association, what you're doing and, you know, how, what it means to be there and in some capacity. I mean, if you're going to UPenn because it's called UPenn, you're doing the wrong thing. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's that's a simple answer. That's it. Yeah. What do you want to do? I mean, right. Is your passion painting, Juilliard, right? I mean, or maybe there's a better. <clears throat> there is no one school that fits everybody, right? Okay. okay. The way the universities rank themselves, and my wife's a professor, and she's <clears throat> she's on admissions. The way they rank themselves is it's it kind of becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. I mean, <clears throat> alumni of the schools rank the schools higher than the school they're currently on. That's a standard bias. So this is how rankings develop. So forget the rankings, right? Let's put that yeah. aside. All right. Next question is, what do you want to do? I mean, if it's electrical engineering, I would probably say, well, what in electrical engineering? Are you interested in RF? Then perhaps yeah. you should go to Stanford, right? They have a really good RF department. Uh, are you interested in uh, high-speed digital communications? I would suggest even Northeastern because they do better high-speed digital than even MIT does. So it depends. What yeah. do you want to do? Do you want to learn Python? Why are you going to college? Yeah. Yep. Right? I, 100%. you want to do neurosurgery, prepare to spend uh, 25 years in yep. school. Yep. So that's what my son is doing. He wants to do neuroscience and electrical engineering. So he's wow. going to be in school for the next 30 years, right? It depends. What do you want to do? Right. What did your passion? What gets you up at morning? I mean, you want to paint? That's something else. You want to make paint. music? That's a whole different place. Ivy Leagues make no sense unless you're specifically targeting. If you want to go to UPenn, I would say, are you interested in legged robots? Are you interested in developing stability control systems for legged robots if your passion is man i want to do that then upen is the best the grass lab is the top in the world um are you interested in computational fluid dynamics then there's you do your research right you look at journal articles you look at who's doing the cutting edge who's getting the grants and you go there it's not the university that matters it's yeah. what your passions are um so forget about the university names and all that right you start with what is your passion? A, can you make a living off of it? B, and where do you need to go to develop the skills? Is it online? Is it a six-month course? Is it a 20-year course? What is it, right? Right. Uh, there's no answer for anybody. I mean, my first son is, um, he's at the Harvard Neuroscience Program and he's planning to do a PhD, MD together, right? That's a whole different ballgame. So he has to be where he is. My other son is just interested in uh, food science and culinary arts. So he went to a whole different place, right? He went to Culinary Institute of America. My third son, I have no idea. <laughs> He's going to develop. What I love about the education system here is that they do have all these opportunities we never did. So I'm not okay. faulting any of it here. And to be fair to the universities, they recognize they are missing that 
industry collaboration. So every single university, and there's 500 plus, has an out industrial outreach program. They have a co-op program. They actively encourage their kids. Once you've learned the two years of fundamentals, go apply this somewhere. Get into industry. They're doing it. To be fair to them, it's not like they're in their ivory towers and don't know the real world. They do. It's hard because some disciplines require inordinate amounts of knowledge to be absorbed. You want to do electrical engineering? You're talking about incredibly complex math for four years. Where are you going to get the time to go to the industry? You're talking about neuroscience? I mean, you're pretty much, I mean, you're, you're sleeping for four hours a day. Yeah. So it depends. Yeah. It depends on the field. Yeah, I agree. Well, yeah, a hundred percent. So, by the way, we work with 150 colleges uh, globally, and um, so as you said, um, but we are predominant, not predominant, entirely in software. And right. uh, so we work with the Northeastern, for instance. Um, they do a lot of projects with us, and we work with um, UT Dallas, Rice, and a bunch of colleges from Canada, and so and UC Berkeley, and. So I, I, I know where, yeah, I agree with you that, yes, they are trying essentially, but um, I guess, um, you know, certain topics, you know, neuroscience and everything, I can't speak for that. I'm not an expert by any means whatsoever. Um, for those, that, for some of the things that I do see, for instance, we work with IM Ranchi um, in India. So, you know, speaking of MBA programs, so I asked the same question, why did you join? What do you want to do after your MBA? Most of the, I mean, except one guy and all of them, I wrote cat, I got in. And then the other one is, uh, um, you know, I'm going to, I want to be product manager. So I, in fact, one guy I offered, I'm going to give you product management role right now. Would you quit? And then just come out and join product management. Obviously, I just wanted to uh, have a conversation. I'm not insisting on that. But point is that, with all these things, right, everything you just talked about, um, you know, um, there is a, you know, I, 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 I talk to people on you know, almost uh, every day uh, when we execute the projects, I jump on the calls to see how they are, what they are doing. With all due respect, most of the projects, the way they have been told to approach is more like an assignment. So they have a report, they have this, they have this, that, and then they have to do a presentation here, which is fine. Nothing wrong with it. However, I the reason I'm bringing it up is every time in the first meeting, I tell them, I don't care about all those reports. This is what we do here. This is how it's going to be. And if you have to be on time, this is the project manager. This guy is this guy. This guy is that. They're all going to work with you. And you have to fit in. You have to make sure that you deliver those. You you know make sure that we can see the deliverable. And if you don't, we don't see the deliverable. We are not. We are going to discontinue working with you on the project because we are going to have somebody else doing it. And so we are, we don't we don't. It's not interesting for us to look at the report and say, okay, this is, doesn't matter. So if you don't have source code with us, uh, you haven't done anything with us. As simple as that. And so. Uh, but the many times I, 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 every time I see that over and over, they'll say, okay, you know, yeah, that's all good, but I have to submit this report. And, uh, you know, how do you make sure that this happens? They are under so much pressure to their focus is driven by that report more than actual product development. And then I tell them, you know, there was in the recent past, I've been telling them, don't worry about that. I'll sign it. I'll sign it right now that you completed a project. Submit it. Go ahead and submit it if you want. But if you don't do it, I'm going to stop. It's your problem. I mean, you're not learning. If you don't want to learn, don't join this project. And if we are not going to entertain just for the namesake and say, okay, well, yeah, you know, so you show something and we'll, uh, PowerPoint or something. You know, I want you to do a demo. If you can't do the demo, you're not going to do. The, you know, we are not going to continue the project with you. We'll go with someone else. So, I guess the point is that you know we, we all have been through it, and you you mentioned in in certain way even with your kids, all three kids. You know, um, there is a long process of learning this, 
by the time they get to apply and get some sense of uh, accomplishment, it's taking very long time. I mean, mm -hmm. for us, it took 20 years minimum. And so I learned math in sixth grade onwards. Uh, by the time, first time I applied when I first got the job in early 90s, until that point, keep learning and learning and learning and, and more certificates and, and this, that. I didn't have a lot of them, by the way. Uh, but a lot of people with math Olympiads, that Olympiad, this. I went to CSI, Computer Society of India. I got second prize, whatever that means. Nobody cared. Um, and I guess, you know, we accumulate so many degrees and badges and badges. And then suddenly you come out. Sometimes they're fatigued and they say, I want to take a year off. Uh, uh, or sometimes they say, okay, now I got to figure out what I want to do. So that's, uh, that I always wonder, man, poor guy. I mean, he's, he's, he's done with his, uh, all yeah. life. so with that, yeah. So anyway, I, I say it's interesting, but at the same time, I agree with you that, you know, earlier you made a point, it's not going to change. It, it, there is no way uh, for us to expect that to be changed. So as a student, as you said, uh, the examples you gave, has to figure out, okay, this is what I want to do. In order to do this, This is these are the colleges I have to go to if I want to go to college. Otherwise, yeah. this is how I have to approach so that I can get there. If they don't figure it out, they'll be Somebody lost. has to write them. Yeah. Yeah. So, so one thing I like to add is that I know you're more into, I mean, this is more of a software type question. Um, so, you know, generally what I tell people is that neuroscience or uh, completely or mechanical engineering or whatever, just have tech as a life skill, not uh, as a subject what, anymore. What is tech? I mean, how are we defining tech? Yeah. So tech is, okay. So if we simply put, let's say, hey, you know, you want to understand blockchain. So if I go to a person who is a nurse in a hospital today and say, why don't you read about blockchain and figure out and see if you can help your uh, team to, you know, navigate using this blockchain technology. The first answer I get is forget about it. That's all tech. I'm, I'm, not, I, I'm not a tech person. There is a mental block that th these are all foreign to us. I'm not fit for that. And there is no way I can deal with it. I'm not saying that they have to come and do coding, Java program, none of those. In other words, the, the technology is evolving so many things, right? Metaverse, AI, for instance. So Software. many things are happening as an outsider, quote unquote, you know, do you have the ability to grasp and get that into the what you want to do uh, with the help of somebody? You can have a conversation with another guy and say, hey, you're an AI expert. This is what I want. And you want to have that intelligent conversation. And, and in order to have intelligent conversation, first you have to know how it's going to help you. So that is the level of tech you know, I'm talking about, uh, at least. And then you know, all the way, you know, if you can do something of your own, that's even better. Um, but that something has to start from early, early childhood. In other words, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's kind of hard once you get past certain age with, all, with everything that goes on in life and your commitments towards other things. And so, I mean, I just wanted to run by you and see your take of having everybody, no matter what they want to do in life, have understanding of tech because tech is going to be everywhere. So we, we want to call it software, right? Not tech. I mean, so a, of a electrical question, yeah, electrical engineering is hard, right? It's, it's impossible for you to go and figure it out uh, while you are doing your assignments. And I mean, it, it's possible, but it's a lot of work. When I say, you know, yeah, it's more of a software slash domains. Let me put it that way: domains like in you know, AI, blockchain, or you know, you know, and all these different verticals, right? Health, healthcare, retail, manufacturing, this, that. And so how tech is helping healthcare, for instance, all the medical devices, uh, all the AI and sentiment analysis, yada, yada. So all these different things and, you know, how data is playing significant role, those kind of things. Let's call it domain. Uh, I don't know. For the lack of we that. can add with software. There is no way yeah. to give uh, subject matter expertise in childhood. Like if I'm 
let's say if I told you design something to transmit data on power lines at 40 kilohertz, I mean, there's no work, no work, right? You can't do that. That's just that no requires about 30 years of experience, right? So right. forget all that kind of tech. That's what we call tech, right? right. That's tech. Right. Right. So we're talking about software in general. In software, right. I mean, to be fair to the US system, they are introducing, I mean, middle school has all the coding camps, right? They're and it's it's a required class in uh, high school. Fundamentals not of much, yeah, not much at least in California. So I I know very well because I I'm closely associated with them. Yes, there are camps. There is coding in the summer camps. Some class here and there. Same same level of introduction. But it's I agree with you. I mean, yeah, teaching uh, kids should be part of the math, reading, writing curriculum. Yeah. Yeah. So my, my take is it's like a horizontal skill, not a vertical. Not challenging, right? I mean, anybody can learn how to code. To be a right. good coder requires experience, but right. anybody can learn how to code. It's not That's challenging. Right. That's right. You don't need an aptitude for it, right? Okay. So yeah, I, I mean, we sh they are doing it. Maybe perhaps not enough, like you said, but yeah. I think it's starting to get there. Basic literacy. Basic literacy. I, I mean, yeah, I, I, I use the word life skill. Yes, basic literacy where, um, you know, I'm more like horizontal skill, right? Like reading, writing and coding. And that, and takes, whatever. that takes a couple of generations. I mean, if you think back to, let's say, pre-Dust Bowl era, right? Pre-depression. From the kids level, average level there to the kids average level now, it's an order of magnitude different. So it does take time. So I'm guessing a couple of generations from now, coding is a part of their three R's, right? Reading, yeah. writing, arithmetic, and logic, right? So I'm guessing it'll get there. Yeah, you are right. I mean, it can happen. I'll tell you where the problem is, right? Same as before we talked about colleges. So with all due respect, all these schools, some math teacher learned some coding and teaching. So it's not a software developer teaching, right? So there's a massive mm. difference. So as a result, the person who's learning is not going to be, I mean, same right. problem we are talking about. Yeah. You are right that in the next generation, these kids who have both uh, teaching uh, capabilities or interest in teaching also learn software you know, systematically, and those generation people are able to teach more effectively, and hopefully, you know, those generations yeah. can pick it I up. I mean, writing wasn't uh, wasn't a big skill until maybe what sixty years ago. It's a very small population of the children. You are to write. Now everybody's ex it's expected, right? I'm guessing it's the same evolution that will happen with software. Yeah, yeah. Basics. Uh, technology is a whole different ball game. I mean, nobody's expecting these kids to understand Shikalsky transistors, for example. Right. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no doubt about it. That's a specialized That's one, right? and that and also, to be honest, it has to evolve over a period of time to the point where, um, you know, if I want to. In other words, if I want to learn this, I need an opportunity to go and learn without going to and apply for a degree and then get there the whole nine years, right? So, yeah. Depends on what you're learning again, right? right? Is it possible to learn on your own? I mean, if I am if I want to pick up a skill in machine learning, I go to Udacity. Right. Done. Right. <clears throat> One month and I have the fundamentals to talk to my team. Right. I need a skill in designing, let's say, high, uh, highly sensitive analog front end. Right. This is not something you're going to, this is something you'll have to go back to your undergrad days, crack open the books, read all the fundamentals and put all your 20 years of experience before you can even begin to tackle the problem. Different problems, different. Yeah, I, I hear you. No, but yeah. my, my point is that even for that, do you think is the way uh, to have an outlet that allows these people without having any formal uh, education, but they are interested in learning those, um, you know, things in the analog side, and have them go through that process just like the way they would have done in colleges, and get their, you know, uh, education, so so to speak. No, you will at the best end up being a tinkerer. The difference between a tinkerer and an engineer is tinkerer tries to figure something out and then wonders why it worked. Right, an engineer. <laughs> Yeah. And we use math and physics. So you know, I some disciplines you and there's no substitute to learning all the courses in college. Like I'd say 90% of my job is if I had to hire somebody for it, I can't hire somebody who's self-taught. They just don't have the skills. It's it's impossible. 
it is impossible to learn everything they teach you in four years. Right, right. I mean, I, I agree with you. In the, in the current system, that is the case, right? Even for software guys, right? Even today, people look for degrees. I mean, there are very few companies. Apple hired a bunch of guys, half the engineers don't have four year degree in Kipper in office. And software is a kind of a different beast, I guess. Right. I mean, software is you can break it down into subdomains and you can say, hey, I'm a Python guy or a front end guy, and you can still do these courses online and be decent at it. Yeah. Right? Because, Not only decent, right? The, the guy who understands the use case is ahead of anybody else, period. Right. Yeah. But there are certain disciplines where oh. you need the solid years and years of foundation, right? Right. Because you can't help but go to college. Right. You can't design advanced electronics without knowing intermediate. You can't design intermediate without knowing the fundamentals. Right? And to know the fundamentals takes four years. So <laughs> some things you can't help it, right? Right, right. No, okay. Yeah, I, I hear you. So what, I guess we both are saying same thing on those uh, yeah. non-software things. It's just that <laughs> my, my take is that, you know, I'll give you another analogy, right? Back in my when we came to this country, so, you know, we all started programming. Now we were all contractors. A lot of us are running companies. So, you know, I remember uh, when tons of people of my my friends, my neighbors, they do this, oh, they want to turn into, or they want to be a business developer or business development role or product management. And then they just go to San Jose State and join MBA program. <laughs> my my talk is that do you really have to go and get that letter or do you, can you learn in a different process, different way? I'm not saying that it just happens overnight. You still learn all those concepts, all those textbooks, all that without going to San, San Jose State and be able to become a product manager. My answer is yes, it, it can, but there was no other way to do it because companies don't entertain talking to you unless you have that letter from your San Jose State. So that's that's where I'm coming from. Even for other other place, we call it college, and, yeah. uh, and MBA is kind of a. I mean, my opinions on MBA are not suitable for your viewers, but it's a whole different. <laughs> that's all right. I mean, it's it's. I've really... never found anything useful in it. <laughs> and I've taken. I've gone to Wharton. I've sat in on their classes. I'm like, okay, this is finance and accounting. That's what this was meant for to teach finance to mid level managers. How did it evolve into management? Master's in business administration has nothing to do with project management or management or anyway. Let's not. That's that's a sure. whole different. Yeah, that's <laughs> in fact, I did a podcast with somebody who's doing BBA in uh, US, and I asked something similar, like you know, you know, I go through challenges in marketing, pricing, and all these comparative analysis. I, I was asking her how all they get taught to you. I mean, it's fascinating. In fact, if they do, I want to know. I mean, yeah, so I, I hear you. So now let's say now that you have seen everything, especially in your area of interest, not software, let's not talk about software. So if you were to build a school and you, you're given a charter of doing this uh, and, and you want to be founder, and how would you build a school and... Maybe you can include software too. I'll take it back. You can include software as well. And how do you approach, okay, this is how I want to build my school so that when they come out, they, they are ready for everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, actually my passion is teaching really. That's what I want to do, teach, right? Teach. But I think you have to have both. We can't just say case based study is best. We can't say learn your fundamentals first is best. You have to have a combination. So I would guess for every fundamental class, you lead with, hey, this was a problem I saw once in a company I worked at. This was what we had to solve. Let's take a small portion of that problem and apply it to what you're going to learn in class today, right? In the next class, which is fundamentals. So remember this problem and learn your fundamentals so you can apply those fundamentals to this problem. That's how I do it. Stagger yeah. them. Stagger industry professionals with professional teachers, professors. Yeah. Industry professionals can't teach. Sure. Right. And they're, and they're not, they don't. <laughs> they're not cut out or they may not be interested in teaching, right? Who knows? Yeah. You're right. They're not. They're not. I mean, I, I my wife's a professor at Drexel. I'm associated with Ben. We've been associated with UD, Hopkins, all these. And Every university, believe me, tries 
they reach out to people like me. They want adjuncts to come in and do these things, right? And it never works because teaching is a different skill set. Right. And you might be really good at your job, but you might not know how to teach that. Patience. So you can't just depend on industry professionals, right? Yeah. yeah. And you can't depend. So it'll have to be a combination. They'll have to stagger back and forth. I agree. Uh, the way I, you know, I'm looking from the top down approach um, uh, from the top, my take is that company, I mean, when I say companies, um, the sector of companies, uh, let's say uh, for, you know, software, all software companies, body of software companies should own the universities. And so they, they will bring the um professors and academy of folks. And also they bring their folks and they bring build the core curriculum and execute that. For instance, for uh, hardware, you know, companies like body of IEEE, for instance, I IEEE type of body can uh, be a co-owner of these universities. They bring all the different things that are happening in the, in the world today. At the same time, have these professors be ready with that industry details and have them teach the fundamentals first and then take them through the journey of going through the, the latest and greatest stuff that's happening. And by the time they finish their degree, they are at least ready for what's happening in the world uh, today. That's it might work for, I mean, that's, that's a good thought. It, it'll work for a lot of disciplines. Some disciplines, it won't work, I can tell you. It won't work for electrical, for example. There's just no time. Just the fundamentals are taking them eight years. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and this is like three, four classes per semester. Right? Yeah. It's just, just too much, too much knowledge. Some, it'll work. Yes, I agree. Some, you just, it's just no way. No, no. <clears throat> yeah, but then, so in those cases where it doesn't work, so they spend eight years learning and then you get out. Now you join a company and then you are losing another two to three years of right figuring out what do they what do I do now? Is that losing or is that improving yourself, growing? Yeah, you that's how it's going to be, right? It looks like it's you're improving, but in other words, you know, you're supposed to be there, you aren't. As a result, you are improving, yes, absolutely. But but you were supposed to be three years ahead of yourself, right? And you're back because it took eight years to get the concepts right in I mean, some students have a passion for this. I mean, I, I agree. Class, yes, uh, no, that's exactly what I was saying in the beginning. This is one of the options, the current way it is set up. For those who are interested in doing that, we don't want to distract them. There are a lot of students either under-challenged or over-challenged with this system. They're not able to fit in or some are getting bored of this. In both the cases, there are no options given by the education system. They are saying that no matter what, just get in and get in the line. So it's your problem. I, Depends. I mean, are they saying this for every field? A lot of fields are now pushing field for saying, Take degree. just high school, right? Just take high school, let alone all these colleges. In high school, there are a lot of students who don't want to go through all these AP courses. And they, they don't have to, yeah. And, yeah and and they are probably they're good at something else. And this system doesn't allow them to pursue those or test it out other guys they're, they're saying it's too boring and uh, you know I, you know i don't know i mean although they are capable of doing it i want to do this i want to build this i want to build that but i don't want to do this AP because it's too boring so in in both the cases they are saying you know just get in the line and this kid is doing you also join the line so they're not giving any other option for the student to Really? That hasn't been my impression. I mean, I was pleasantly surprised because I've had three kids with very different. One did all APs, one didn't do any APs. He did all his own theater and cooking, right? So they were, in, both of them had enough equal encouragement from my perspective, I mean. And it is a public school. I'm not going to a private school. Yeah, yeah. We are talking about public schools. Yeah, yeah. So my take on, at least in where I'm living in suburbs of Philly, it's I wouldn't criticize my kids the way they were given opportunities. I, they, I was, I was very impressed with how they did it. Is this a, is this an isolated case? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But this has been my impression. I mean, they were encouraged. 
taking eight piece was not perhaps this is the case where the parent body has become very insular and very competitive just to show off if that is the case if the parents are dri driving what the kids are doing right. then yes i can see how these dynamics could play out right. there's parental pressure hey yeah. my friend's son is taking ap so you got to take ap okay yeah. if yeah. that is the case then we're not talking about changing the system or the student we're talking about changing parents so maybe before you become a parent you take some classes and get a licensed parent right sometimes <laughs> i think that we could evolve a lot of avoid a lot of trauma childhood trauma with that so that's different right Maybe I that's agree with you. Yeah. No, I, there is a percentage of people, in large percentage, especially from Asian community, parents are highly competitive and sometimes they're more competitive than students. I see that all the time, every day. Well, um, they're competitive because they're compensating for their own whatever, right? So you got to be... Reasons, yeah, I mean, yeah, they, <laughs> you know, yeah, so, you know, I mean, I hear small, small things, right? Come on, teach us, you know, blah, blah. That formula is not taught here. Yeah, I'm like parents talking about it, not kids. And I'm like, okay, geez. Okay. Seems like so, a parental problem to me, not a systematic. No, no, there are. There I are. love the systems here. The kids were encouraged to do whatever. They had, it was wide open for my kids at least. Sure, but I guess the point is the AP course, just one example, right? In other words, um, for instance, uh, I'll give an example. Um, you know, there is a guy uh, who did... Uh, He's from California. He was state second in math. He went to UC Berkeley, he did advanced math and statistics. And he, one fine morning, he decided this whole, he finished though, he finished the degree. His math skills are no longer required in the world. And he joined Home Depot and he's working for minimum wages, which is fine. I mean, I, I don't know whether it's fine or not, but that's what he chose. My take is that Berkeley doesn't even know that this guy is here. So I know that he's part of the alumni, all that. Yes, they expect him to send an email. He's not going to do it. Um, but I hired him. He was with me for six months and he left again. And during those six months, I was very curious to know some of these things. I was very, in a certain way, I was asking. And he felt a lot of pressure uh, to do whatever he ended up doing. And when he finished and he joined a company, he got fired for whatever reason, something. And then he met, he lost confidence. He felt that his math skills is not no longer real. It's commoditized. Anybody can do it. And Where was the pressure it, from? Hmm? Where was the pressure from? I, I guess his uh, peers and parents. I don't know about parents' part. At least definitely peers and everybody. You know, going to you know blah blah school. I want to go to that blah blah school and and uh, and then he just followed that. Because he was very young, right? He was, what, 17, 18, all that, right? So it's not like he doesn't have the, as you said, some direction to say, okay, you know what, don't worry about it. You know, if this is what you want to do, why don't we think about it? None of those, right? So he's good at math. And he, unfortunately, it worked, it worked against him and uh, sort of. And, and then he got into that. And But there are, we think that just one example, there are various examples like that where, People have been boxed for whatever reasons, parents, peers, mostly peers, right? Somebody did it. I want to do it. And and then uh, and then they, they, they get out and they become adults and then they get out of the box and then suddenly they realize, holy, I mean, this is not what I want to do. And then here we go and not many options left in some cases. And there is a struggle and then slowly uh, I... I Hopefully they recover and get back on track, whatever that track means, you know, for them. Um, so that, these are the things like, you know, what I was referring to as um, not having liberty for students to, uh, you know, do whatever they want. For instance, your, your, your kids are lucky that you have an open mind. You encourage them and you, you are recognized that early on and say, okay, you know what, I want to be... Uh, I want to be, you know, chef and cooking. He said, hey, you know what? Okay, let's do it. And uh, why don't we figure that out? And let's go with that path instead of becoming engineer or a doctor. <laughs> and that's our time. Uh, yeah. So, um, you know, I don't think uh, that's, you know, that's if you, if they are not given that direction at that time from yeah. somewhere, 
from somewhere. From somebody, whoever, yeah. Exactly. Somewhere, and, yeah. and they are going to be in the box and then they started. That's why, right? You know, what is it? I heard 50% of the students, they drop out of college. Is that right? Some massive number in America. Uh, people, they go to college, they drop out. Uh, it depends on the department, I guess. Yeah. And some crazy number I read somewhere. I forgot where it was. But long story short, um, I guess my take of the reason they are dropping out or changing the direction, I know a lot of people pre-med and compu graduate with computer science. Join as computer science graduate, I mean, join as um, CS uh, undergrad and come out with some photography or whatever. So I guess that's happening because suddenly they get into that discovery process. Of, okay, it's not working out for me. It's not what I want. And as you said here, they have option to get out and they do. Whereas in our case, you get in, right. you have not much of option. You just stay with it, whether you like it or not. That's just, uh, that's just natural for a country's evolution, right? As the country moves up in the Maslow scale, people will have more options. They'll have more open minds. They'll do more. It's natural. I mean, think about Middle Ages. <laughs> we have like yeah, orders of magnitude of options, right? So I'm guessing it'll get better. Not, not a pessimist by any chance. No, I mean, yes. See, I guess the... Uh, uh, if I have to summarize everything we just talked about, right? The way I put it is the healthy and high quality life of any human being is first 25 to 30 years. After that, you know, it, I'm not saying that they're unhealthy or anything, but it, you're not going to be as, you're not going to be 25, you know, you know, when you are 35, 40, 45, 50 and things like that. So, you know, and then you are slowly for lack of a better term, you sort of downhill in terms of, you know, your enthusiasm, your energy, freshness, everything. And we, I personally think that the best time of your life is being spent on something, trying, you know, this, that, and learning so many things. Yeah, and then, you know, I learned a lot of things that I never used in my life for good. And I knew that even when I was reading or when I was going through all those exams, I knew that I'll never use these. But I had to do it. And I think to some degree, they're still being uh, the case even now. And so, and then once you get to a certain stage, okay, now they say, oh, you're experienced, you're matured. Oh, you can do all these things. I'll put you on the flight, go to Japan and take care of this. So the guy who is a 21, 22, he wants to go to Japan and take, close the deal. We say, you don't have experience. You're not matured enough. I can't give you that role. Wait until you become 40 and you have knee problems and you know, all that. Okay, I'll put you on the flight now. You are my senior VP. Okay, go to Japan and close the deal. And that guy doesn't want to go. He's popping the pills and you know he doesn't want to go. I mean, and but he has to go for life reasons. He has mortgage to pay or whatever. And, and the guy who is 21, he wants to go and we don't let him go. So because he doesn't know anything. So that's the problem. I think we got, we, I, I, my humble opinion is we got it reversed. And in order, certain, like you said, in certain degrees, which I have no idea about, and uh, it might take longer, I agree. Uh, but I think there has to be a way for these younger guys to be able to do better things early on. There are a few guys who did it, right? Mark Zuckerberg, Big Ace, and there are a handful of guys. <clears throat> Those Good they cannot can be examples. They are outliers, and they had a lot of help. That's pure chance. Right. You cannot hold up Zuckerberg's and Gates as examples. No, no, I'm not. Example. I'm not saying that there are more people that can do something like that. There are very out of billions of people, only three, four guys did it. And mm. I'm pretty yeah. sure there are more people who, are, if they had right exposure, they would have done it. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying they take that as a role. You know. Um, a role model and follow that trend. That's not, but more people could have done it if they were given the same, or if they were on the same track of having that kind of exposure. I don't know. I mean, Bill Gates' mom was on the board of IBM. That's how he right. got his source. So how right. many people can have the same thing? No, there are a lot board of board people board. on the board of IBM right now. Their kids are in schools. They're not doing it. I mean, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, in other words, if they were, anyway, you know what I'm saying. 
I mean, yeah. I'm not. I guess the point is that. Yeah, yeah, you got the point. It depends on the field of study, I guess. I mean, for for my side, from hardware, I cannot take a 21-year-old and cram 30 years of experience into his head overnight so he can go to Japan. It's impossible, right? So there are certain fields you have to put in the time. It's decades of experience, like yeah. surgery, right? You can't just take a right. guy right out of rotation and expect him to perform microsurgery. He's not going to be. So, so it depends on the field. <coughs> You're right. So it has to be tailored to the time it takes to develop a skill. Right. If it takes six months, you don't need college. If it takes 30 years, you better go to college and get those fundamentals done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. if there Depends. is a study that requires 30 years, yes. You know, you need a, a, a constant um, a nurture and that has to be a streamlined process. It can be ad hoc. And uh, yeah, I agree with that. But at least the ones that I see around here, most of most of the times, um, you know, they. I mean, there are a lot of MBAs coding right now. <laughs> so and then vice versa, a lot of uh, computer science guys are, you know, running a business. It's going uh, other way around. So, uh, in fact, my boss, a uh, long time ago, he was a PhD from MIT. His first job was PLM right after college. Right after his PhD, so I once I we were out in the outing and generally casually asked, so why you chose to do PhD and not stay in R and D? Then he jokingly said, it took so long for me to figure out that I'm not fit for uh, <laughs> those disciplines. But he's he's joking, but I guess the point is that he after he completed. By the way, he was into hardware. Uh, he was the CEO of uh, one of the. Um, chip companies recently had a big exit and uh, so he um he, you know he I, I guess you know he, he felt that i mean this is what i want to be on the business side of things and then he just grew and he's doing very well don't get me wrong but but if in if according to you know our education system if you want to be that you do mba don't do phds right so that's how they defined and he went opposite so and I, you might have seen tons of cases like that too. So I'm just saying that, you know, the 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 reality what end up happening with you versus what you learn is not always you know, one to one. That's uh, reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Could be. Thanks a lot, uh, Madhu. By the way, yeah, so sure, it know, it's, it's a pleasure and talking to you. And uh, so we'll do. We'll probably take one of your uh, pet subjects, maybe uh, get into a deep down in the next time so that we all can learn, <laughs> myself included. Um, so, no, I'm serious. Like, uh, this is great. And this is the kind of content we want to create so that people hopefully can glean a little bit out of it and utilize for their own benefit. So, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot, Guru. It was a pleasure. Yep. Take care.